Yeah. Okay, uh, my name is Roger Henny. I'm one of the co-founders and also the CEO of uh, Datum. Um, how do I change the slides? Uh, so I'm sure you heard this quote before, data is the new oil. Um, and if you look at companies like Google and Facebook, um, most of their revenues come from advertising, advertising against your data, your personal profile, um, your likes, um, and the products you buy. Um, um, so the question is, how much is your data really worth? So we built a calculator. You can go to calc.datum.org and see how much money these companies are making off the data that they're collecting off of you every day. And the number that we came up with, with these 20 companies that we looked at, is about 2,000 US dollars per year. Um, and on our website, you can check out um, the numbers for individual companies. And you would think they would uh, safeguard your information and your personal data. Um, but they don't. So Equifax just a few weeks ago um, lost the data of every second American um, uh, person. They lost the social security number, people's addresses, and so on. And the problem is really that all of this data is stored in centralized databases. So these companies are building these huge data silos that store your information. They usually have a firewall or some sort of front door that protects it, but that is always very insecure. It always gets hacked by hackers. And then even worse, from the back end, governments also come and access this information as well. So we set out to find a solution for this. Um, and this is the data network. Um, so we are building two things. One is a decentralized storage layer for structured data. So you may have heard about projects like Filecoin. Um, so they are building a decentralized file system. And we're building a decentralized database. Um, why structured data? That's the data that is worth, um, uh, usually worth much more than files because that is the data that machines can read. So while you're using your phone or while you're using Facebook or Google, they collect all of the information of what you're doing in a database. And so we're building a decentralized database where you can store your data with your private key and you're always the one that is in control. And you can share and sell access to this data. So this is the second part that we're building on top of that, is the marketplace for the structured data. So we allow individuals, but also companies, to then trade these data sets in an easy and simple manner. And all of this is powered by our token. And um, if you want to build any sort of marketplace or free trade, you mainly need three main things. You need to have a means of exchanging value. So that's the core functionality of the token. Secondly, you need to have some sort of rule of law. You need to have conditions in place that govern the exchange of the data. So this can be done by using the smart contract of our Ethereum token. And last but not least, you need to have a way to measure this data that you're trading. And um, so by convention, we're adding various metadata in the data network that is uh, able to quantify um, data and measure it. And so this shows how our smart contract works. And there are three main utilities of this token. First of all, anyone storing data pays in the debt token to store data. Secondly, storage nodes, which are like miners in the Bitcoin network, are rewarded in debt tokens to run our network. So you could compare this network also to something like the torrent network, um, which is run by people for the people. And last but not least, anyone that wants to purchase these data sets that are on our platform can buy the data using the debt token. And um, how do we get at your data to begin with? Because now this data sits in the services that you're using, but you don't really have access to that data directly. So we are building the data app, which you can install on your mobile phone. You can connect a few data sources, things like Gmail, Facebook, HealthKit. And we help you to extract this data and store it securely inside data. And once it's inside the data network, you can start selling this data. And this can be as simple as basically selling access to your email, for example, the right to receive emails. But it can be much more complex. For example, you can sell actual receipts that you get in your email inbox from other companies. Let's say you get receipts from Amazon or Apple. Other companies can go and buy these receipts. And we anonymize um, this data and remove any personally identifiable information. 
And we already have two hardware partners. So um, one of the big use cases for Datem are various IoT devices that create their own stream of data throughout the day. And the first uh, two products that we have is a smart water bottle. Um, so this bottle tracks how much water or coffee you're drinking every day. And this data gets directly uploaded into the Datem network. And companies can come and buy this data. And the second uh, product is Swings. It's a the classic smartwatch, so it has an accelerometer, and it basically works like a Fitbit, but in a nicer watch package. And so all of this data directly goes into the data network, where you control who you want to share or sell this data to. And then we are building a data API. Um, so this is our vision that we want to offer to developers to provide them a way to securely store your personal data when they are developing a mobile app, for example. So this is uh, a replacement for things like uh, Google Firebase or Parse.com or any sort of database as a service backend. So we're finding that we are providing developers an alternative so that they can directly store the data inside the data network they still get delegated access to your data, but you can at any time revoke this access or control what happens with this data. Um, and you can actually check out some of these things. You can go to demo.datum.org to check out our app. And um, this is our blockchain explorer, so to say. You can see that at dashboard.datum.com, um, what's going on in our test network at the moment. And really, so when you talk about ICO, it's, um, you can also say ICO could be initial customer onboarding. Um, and what we found is that as part of doing the ICO, the token sale, we were able to create a huge community um, around the hashtag take back your data. And uh, over 75,000 people have signed up um, for this idea. And you can go to our website to see uh, William Shetner, uh, Captain Kurt, explain uh, what data is. Um, so we are three Swiss co-founders um, that actually live in Asia for a long time already. Um, and so our company is based out of Switzerland and Hong Kong. And um, in terms of our advisors, of course, Chris um, from Iconic, you already heard him talk before. And also, um, for example, Jane uh, Metcalf, who is uh, the founder of the Wired magazine. Um, and she just also loves this idea of allowing individuals to reclaiming their data, to reclaim data ownership. Um, so all the details of our sale you can find on uh, datum.org. And uh, the sale ends this Wednesday. So uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Q&A, and uh, so if anyone has a question for Dana, you can raise your hand. Uh, Who do you see as your primary competitors, and what type of... Who do you see as your primary competitors, and what type of response do you expect from, like, let's say, Google or Facebook? So, um, immediately we're disrupting the data brokerage <laughs> industry, which is a 150 billion industry this year. Um, it's basically companies um, selling off data sets, right? If you're a marketeer, you want to get a list of people that are interested in real estate in the US and Washington, there's companies that provide this sort of data. So we're immediately disrupting these companies by basically collecting information from individuals and aggregating them. Um, so the, the response from Google and Facebook, um, we, I mean, we are doing something a bit different. We're going after the raw data. Um, and Google, for example, is collecting all of this data for free nowadays, which is not right. So most of you are, have Google Maps on their phone, and Google gets this background location data, which is extremely valuable for free from all of us. And so we're providing an alternative for other developers to get access to that data. Um, we don't know how far that will go, but from our point of view, if you look at all your personal data that could be interesting, Google and Facebook are only a little slice of that. The remaining data is locked up maybe at governments, maybe at your healthcare provider, and so on. So we really think in the future, data could be a way for developers to, to build services that use your personal data and get access to a much wider array of your personal data, right? Even than what Google and Facebook can access um, at the moment. Are, are there any competitors that you would say are similar to you? Um, 
No, not really, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 if you want to hear some project name, of course there is other projects that provide, um, uh, for example, Filecoin, Write, Saya, and so on. So that is for file storage. Um, there is other projects that do some similar things in terms of financial prediction markets or so. They have similar technology behind one of the guys here was Enigma, for example, um, recently. Uh, yeah. Any other, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I just want to clarify, how does a data token play in the role of data economy that we're talking about? Here? Right, so first of all, the storage of your data needs to be decentralized, so we are not running the database. And to incentivize people to provide their notebook or their server to be one of the nodes that runs this network, we need to reward them somehow. So, so this is the main first role of the token, is to reward these people. And then, of course, anyone that wants to store data in a network needs to pay for that. But for individuals, we are basically offering uh, microcredits, so you will never have to pay something. But if a, a company wants to put one terabyte of data on the network, they have to pay for this storage. Um, and last but not least, What's, so we use something called proxy re-encryption to securely um, allow people to access this data without needing a middleman in the middle when the data trade happens. So if you compare, if you look at something like uh, eBay, if you buy something, you need to send the money to eBay, and eBay tells the seller, hey, I received the money, it's okay, you can now send the merchandise. So we are able to uh, automate all of that through the smart contract, in the 3 0 smart contract, but the really important piece is this proxy re-encryption, which, which allows you to share data with someone else without the network in the middle ever being able to decrypt that data. So the only people who ever get access to data is you and the person that you sell this data to. And in no point of this transfer are we involved. So we built the technology, we built the blockchain and the decentralized data storage network, and, and that is what the token allows us to do. And also I think in, it's a good question because tokens I think there's two big things for tokens um, where tokens can be used and, and one is basically in any sort of user incentive uh, system, right? If you want to build any system where you want to incentivize users to do certain things, uh, tokens can be used very well for that. Does Datum have any potential with any other uh, IoT companies for greater cooperation? Yeah, sure. Actually, we uh, talked to some very large enterprises already, and also one of the probably the largest chip maker for IoT devices. Um, the, the problem of storing all this data is really unsolved uh, at the moment. Um, so, again, startups are using services like Firebase. But the data is not really secure in there, so yeah, we're definitely talking. We're also talking, we talked to a PC manufacturer, which is, was a very interesting talk, because um, a few years ago, some of these PC manufacturers um, installed some spyware on people's computers that was logging what the users were doing, right? This was an additional revenue stream for, for when they sell a notebook. Um, and so now they're coming back to this idea, not of going back and reinstalling that spy software, but through data, you can basically ask the user, hey, do you want to share like, some of your usage statistics um, in, re in, in reward for you know, our debt tokens or in rewards from, rewards from, from that company? Um, so yeah, we see a big uh, use case for that. Thanks, okay. Uh, one more question here in the back. Um, do you have any existing buyers of the data? Like, who would be interested? In yeah, so that's a good question. So actually, uh, we are just launching the beta of our app in two weeks, and these seventy-five thousand people that I mentioned before, they're all crypto community enthusiasts. And so the first use case is that these people can sell their email. So we actually have a whole list of ICOs already, other ICOs that want to basically promote their project to this community. <coughs> So it's really the use cases you can sell your email address. Um, yeah, so yes, we do have buyers. And um, 
the, the special thing is what is on your phone is actually extremely valuable. For example, if you tell the comp if you tell any company, hey, would you like to buy email receipts of your direct competitor of people, right? Um, that, that is a very interesting thing. There's currently no way for a company to get at similar data. Yeah, that goes back to the same uh, question is why would I buy a lot of data is a bag of Google, let's say like my phone yeah, so you, every single step of yeah, but you, so Google doesn't share this data, right? Google sells the data in form of advertisements, meaning it, you know, you can make advertisement on Google um, for people that are interested in, in real estate in Washington DC, right? But you can't get at a raw list of users from Google, nor can you get at any background location data from Google, for example. So they take all of this data and then they sell advertisements against it, and there would be a huge market. The problem is also, there's lots of knowledge that lies in this information. So developers could do a lot with this background location data, but they have no way of, of accessing it. So one company that, that contacted us, they have the largest deployments of Bluetooth beacons in Australia. So those beacons allow them to tell um, companies what the users, what consumers are doing inside a store. And so that company tried for years to get access to the background location data of users because that would allow them to analyze what are, what are consumers doing outside of the store. But they have no way of accessing this data. So through data, we give them a chance to get access to this data. And you as an individual get rewarded for turning on the sharing of this location data. Which in fact in Google, as soon as you have Google Maps installed, by default it's sharing this data for free to Google. Okay, one last question is, how do you prevent abuse of people? Yeah, so we, we, yeah, so we have a trust and rating system in a sense that data can be um, uh, rated. And also, by default, all the data is traded anonymously. But we do provide several layers where you can start sharing your identity. And we expect that at some point, if, if abuse and fraud becomes a big problem, that more and more you will need to have some sort of verified identity. For example, you could have your identity verified on Newport or Civic, which are other blockchain projects, um, and then that allows you to sell the data on Datum. You're not sharing your actual identity, right? You're just saying, hey, I'm actually a verified person that I did share my identity on Newport, for example, to open a bank account or whatever. Um, so we have various of these ways of, of um, basically uh, creating a, a trust uh, yeah, for a seller of data. Yeah. Yeah, we know that the current uh, business model of the Google and Facebook is the uh, Do you reiterate your business model and how is it in the business model term uh, that is the Yeah, so at the very core, we just provide an eBay for data. Very simple. A place to store data and a place to trade data. This can be between companies, but one use case that we are building one vertical on top of this data storage network is this C2B use case, consumer to business. And that's what we're doing with the data app. That is this movement that we created, take back your own data. Um, so we actually don't know if that's going to be the killer use case. We're building infrastructure to enable um, easy trading of any data sets, and maybe it turns out that the killer use case will be just kind of boring B2B, right? Um, so in other words, you don't know what's the disrupted business model yet. Correct, yeah. So we, we are building this infrastructure. Um, me and my co-founders were working at two different IoT startups before, and all this data is collected, and we felt um, there's more value in that data that is not getting used. There's, you know, there's an opportunity to unlock the value in that data. And we are building the infrastructure for that. We know there is various use cases that can benefit from that, but which one will be the most, you know, economically the most interesting? Uh, we don't pretend to know. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, that's also interesting. One of our advisors is actually a, a lawyer, and we brought him on for that. Um, there are many issues around that, and for example, in the European Union next year, they are introducing a new regulation, general data protection regulation, and this will force companies to give you some rights on your data. One very important thing, you can ask any company in the European Union next year to delete your data. Right? This seems like a basic thing, but that is a big problem already nowadays. And so, Datum goes way beyond that. In Datum, all the data that is stored, belongs to you and you're the only one ultimately who has control. So we go way beyond this, for example, GDPR. 
the datum API that I talked about. Um, we allow companies to be GDPR compatible without having to invest anything in you know, making themselves compatible. So if they use Datum as their data storage backend, automatically they are, you know, they go beyond GDPR um, regulations. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much to Roger. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> we'll be here all day and with his team. So if you have any questions.